I've distilled three kind of tips uh, or things that have helped me as I look back and reflect on the last 20 years. Um, first and foremost is that I think that the more obsessed you can be about your idea, your product, or whatever it is you're taking to market, the better off and the higher level of success you're going to have. And what I mean obsessed is that you, you really literally are, you can't sleep at night, you wake up in the middle of the night, you're thinking about this thing, you wake up in the first thing in the morning, as you're eating your bowl of cereal, you're thinking about, okay, how can I make this better? What can I bring to market? You're thinking about the market size, what your competitive advantage is, and that's all that occupies your mind really um, for the next foreseeable future. And that's the thing that if, if you don't find that obsession, I think it's hard to get up and really push this because you're essentially pushing a really large boulder up a big mountain. And typically you're with one other person, maybe your co-founder. And it's really hard because you've got all, you know, investors saying that is a bad idea. You've got your, you know, sometimes your friends saying you're crazy. Um, and the, the more focused you are, the more obsessed you are, the, you know, uh, higher likelihood you'll find success somewhere along the line. Second is strong support network. I'm a huge advocate of co-founders. Um, every one of the startups I've done, I've had a co-founder. Um, and that's because usually you have a bunch of highs and lows. And um, typically what I'm finding is when I'm high, my co-founder's low. And when he's high, I'm low. And so we kind of offset each other so that um, it helps you kind of push that boulder forward and trudge through the dark days. Um, so that's one element of the support network. Uh, if you have a spouse uh, or a married, um, you want to have make sure that you have her support or his support uh, because uh, again you know you you come home and sometimes it's very depressing and it's it's good to have someone that can pick you up if uh, you're looking at a dark day um, and then you know I also look for the local entrepreneurs um, their support networks so other guys that are doing the same thing you guys can share stories laugh at them um, and pick each other up and then advisors so people that have gone out and started companies and now are at a position where they're advising entrepreneurs. They like to get involved. They love the lifeblood of startups, and they, they're, they're addicted to it as much as you are, and so they want to contribute back by helping um, early stage. So that's the second thing, strong support network. And the third is just maintaining a, an extremely high integrity. Uh, the world's small. Um, if you're treating people, whether it's your investors, your co-founders, your, um, your employees, or people you, you know in, interact with, horribly, it's going to come around and, and it's going to be, whether it's now or later on, it's going to come out and bite you. Um, I've seen, um, you know, I've seen all walks of, I've, I've seen a lot of different personalities and, and I found that, you know, what comes around goes around, treat people kindly and like you like, would like to be treated. Um, and I think that's uh, another level of uh, what, what's helped, I think, on the building success. Right now in Game It, I really wish um, we pivoted. You, you know, as much as I say you had to be obsessed and really focused on your startup, you also pivot two or three times. And you know, game it. This is more raw because I've just gone through it. We started out actually with one concept of the game and the product, and we pivoted within two months, and we went towards a different because I thought it was bigger, a bigger opportunity, a bigger pain to solve. We actually sort of stayed because we come full circle. We started with a concept and a product. We went live with that. We pivoted within two months. We should have stayed there. We went towards a different market, and then we ended up pivoting back. Had we stayed focused, I, I don't know. I think we would have avoided um, burning a lot of cash, um, but I, I didn't do that. I also, I think I went against the um, kind of uh, code of ethics of an entrepreneur. I thought, you know, it's, I raised a lot of money and we burned through a lot of it. I wish I would have done a little more bootstrapping. Um, I think that the last two startups, I you know was able to build confidence in my investors. They've had exits, they've been able to take money back, and I got those guys to invest in me again, I think too quickly. I think I, w I should have um, waited, done a little more proof um, in the, you know, uh, proof, proving it out, um, and I think I would have saved some, some hardship. But you know, hindsight's 50-50. Don't lose sight of what's most important in life. Um, you know, building a startup, you know, money is not the happiness. And I see so many families and people get destroyed by, they make, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars and then they self-destruct. Um, you, Hollywood is a great example of this where you see young stars rise and then they self, they put the self-destruct button. I see it more often than not with entrepreneurs. Um, it's just quieter. No one notices it, but they get a lot of money and then they destroy themselves. 
Um, I think that if you can keep focus of what's really most important, money is not the thing that brings the happiness. It's building a really cool, valuable thing that the world loves, and that's really rewarding. Um, it's, uh, money is nice, and it certainly can alleviate pain, but it is not the source of the greatest happiness.